so basically, could you just tell us uh, who you are and what your main role is? Sure. Um, my name is uh, Jean Clendenen, and uh, I work at the University of Alberta. I do a number of things there. I, I head up the uh, Centre for Research for Teacher Education and Development. Um, I also uh, do research um, on for different funding agencies and I work with many graduate students and I do some uh, collaborative work with school districts and other universities. If I focus on your research yes. uh, talk yesterday, um, the idea of narrative inquiry, um, for those people who weren't here or may struggle with what the idea of that is, how would you actually just outline what that's about? Right. Um, well, we start with a, a fundamental view that, that people live and tell stories and that that's our way of thinking about experience is so that as I live my life, I'm living out stories and I tell stories of my life. And as a narrative inquirer, what we try and do is to come alongside people and have them tell us stories or else we go and work in their classrooms or in their hospitals or uh, their schools or where, where they are um, and get them to, so we kind of live with them in a way um, and uh, listen to their stories and also uh, watch what they do and uh, hang out in a way. And, and our intention really is to try and understand what people's experiences are. And for us, that's really, uh, that's really an important piece that's often missing in the research. Um, we do research on rather than research with, and we don't necessarily hear the stories that people, teachers, children, youth, physicians um, are living. As a research approach, I guess that people have difficulty with this because when you get some more hard-nosed researchers who use statistics and maybe people who used to doing qualitative research but not this kind, right. do you find that you've had to challenge and battle your way with research methods people to get this more established? Absolutely. I think that one of the things that I said yesterday in my, in my talk was that you know, certainly when we started, when I started to do my, my research, I didn't ever intend to be a, a research methodologist. I just wanted to understand people's experiences. Um, and I think that trying to think about them narratively was something that we, we came to um, from other uh, scholars such as Mark Johnson. And what's been really interesting for us is um, both how difficult it's been to shift, but also how quickly it, it's happened. There's really a, a narrative revolution going on in several disciplines, not just education. That does bring me on to the, the next question, which is when we actually try to apply this to a field, mm -hmm. I mean, education seems to be one of the areas where it seems very applicable, yeah. teachers telling stories, children telling stories and so on. But in terms of actually widening that, again for people who may be researchers thinking of adopting this, do you see any kind of natural places outside the humanities where this could go? Well, certainly I do a lot of work over in our medical school. Uh, so, um, because me uh, physicians, um, one of the things that they're very interested in, in trying to understand is they're trying to listen um, to people's stories of their illnesses. And so, um, working with the physicians and trying to help them learn not to start with the diagnosis but to start with the stories of experiences has been very interesting. So I think that, that uh, that's been one of, the, one of the areas outside of education. Um, certainly we get a lot of, I get a lot of students, graduate students and faculty from other faculties like physical education and recreation and leisure um, and they're very interested in, in the work as well. Um, because they, they're trying to design uh, programs and activities and it's important to uh, start from trying to understand people's experiences and what their hopes and dreams and intentions are, what those forward-looking stories are that they're telling about what they want as we think about um, designing various kinds of programs. I suppose that's a kind of education and, as well, but it's certainly outside uh, and certainly, we've been doing some work with people in, in geriatrics as well, um, 
who are interested in knowing how to, to work with our aging populations. That sounds like a very big project to take. Yes. <laughs> um, and I know people who don't work with the Indigenous First Nations people. Ah. And again, that's the kind of cultural area it will go. Uh, the very last thing I just want to ask you about this is that if you imagine there may be researchers seeing this and thinking, I like the idea, um, I'd like to run with this and give it a test. What advice would you give to somebody who may want to try out this as a, an approach uh, for the very first time with a group of people? My advice always is you really need to start with yourself. And so we talk about autobiographical uh, narrative uh, inquiry. And I think it's really important to, to think about this in relation to your own life before you start to come into relation and try and hear others others uh, stories so that would be my advice um, would be to start with yourself the next piece of advice would be um, if this is research it, that you would like to keep yourself out of don't do this because it's a very relational kind of research um, you know one of the other things if I can just say that's not one of your questions um, but I was listening this morning to this to the speaker and thinking about what what he was talking about in terms of the relationship between policy and, and research. I find that policy makers um, who do want to know, like, what can I do? Uh, and uh, the, it, listening to the speaker this morning was very interesting. But they're very often, they find the stories very compelling and, and often uh, see things that they hadn't seen before. Um, out of the work that I talked a little bit about yesterday around early career teacher attrition. One of the things w that was very interesting is when we went to, s to speak to the policymakers in Alberta education, um, they, were, they were really interested and I said, so one of the things you could think about doing very quickly is changing the language, the discourse, from retaining teachers to sustaining teachers in their, in their lives. And it was fascinating. Um, the policymakers said, we can do that right away. And of course, out of that, as we start to change a discourse, um, then many things start to change. So if we stop thinking retaining and start thinking about sustaining teachers in, in their life careers, that we start to think very differently about who they are. So it's interesting that, that sometimes um, we need to take uh, particular uh, care with the stories we tell, but that, that it is a kind of research that does influence policy um, in some fairly um, significant ways if we can learn to have the conversations with policymakers so they can hear the stories that uh, we're trying to tell. It's very insightful by the sound of it once you can get to grips with it, isn't it? Yes, it is. I was is. thinking when you were talking about policy, your question is about so what, who cares? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and those so what and who cares questions and then so how do we how do we then talk to them in a way that speaks to those kinds of things like the, the questions of what's usable what can we do um, how can we be unambiguous how can we and I think as we start to tell the stories of people um, and start to think about it from the experience of the people that we most care about, whether they're children, uh, teachers, parents, families, um, physicians, um, patients, uh, th that it offers us lots of, lots of possibilities. And if I could come back what, just one more time quickly. Um, yesterday when I talked, um, I'm not sure it was, it was clear, but uh, the, the, the questions around uh, um, people of Aboriginal heritage are particularly pressing. And the work of Sean Lassard and Sky Songmaker, um, they're both Aboriginal, people of Aboriginal heritage. And uh, they have both taught me a great deal. Um, but I think that they have also learned to, uh, to uh, uh, see themselves as researchers as long as narrative inquiry is seen as a way that they can engage in research. So many people of Aboriginal heritage have, have become interested in narrative inquiry.